Hey guys, Grumpy Tank here, bringing you another replay. I'm platooned up with a couple uh, Forge clanmates, and uh, we're playing some tier 8 tanks. We've got a pretty good uh, matchmaker here. We're top tier, and it's mostly tier 8s and tier 7s, and, well, a bunch of tier 6s as well. So, this is a pretty ideal matchup for us. We're going to be able to do a lot of damage in this game and uh, have a pretty big impact on the outcome of the battle. So we're gonna start deploying out here. Um, generally, I don't, I don't personally like going down that northern route uh, in Bravo 8 because it's kind of cramped. And unless you've got a lot of armor and hit points, it's not the best place for you to go. It's really easy to bottle up with a couple of tanks. So hopefully the guys that are going over there are gonna play it smart and just play defensively. It looks like somebody on their team did drown themselves somehow. There's not a lot of deep water on this map, but hey, you know, <laughs> stupid people will be stupid. So I'm just kind of moving up to get a vantage point here. There's quite a few spots along this 1-2-3 line route that you can get a really nice vantage point and snipe quite a bit of stuff, and this, this is one of them. Going over here mainly to deal with this uh, Jumbo Sherman in the middle, but oh, look, there's a silly KV-4. He's going to eat a shell in the side. I am using the 100mm gun on this AMX-48, which is not the top tier gun. The top tier gun is actually a 120, but the top tier gun uh, has a very long aim time, has worse accuracy, and does about 100 more damage with a little more pen. Um, but the reason I don't like it is because the long aim time. It it really reduces the mobility advantage that this TD has because you have to stop and you have to aim and you have to aim for quite a long time. So I see that our team is getting pushed pretty hard in that north path. Um, our three tanks that are over there are fighting about four or five enemies and they're not doing the greatest job. I think one of them was already dead, so yeah, it's a 2v4 or 5. And they're going to get overrun soon, so I'm just going to move back north to position myself to defend Cap when they come uh, pouring out of the north. Our team in the south is doing a pretty good job pushing the enemy, because they recognize that if the enemy's no uh, strong in the north flank, then they're weak in the south. So... Again, one of the problems with this north is that once you do push through the pass, the enemy has beautiful defensive positions from which to shoot you. So that's not super good. I'm just going to knock over a tree for some extra, extra concealment here. <coughs> not that it helps too much because I have to move past it, but I'll try and get a shot on this Jumbo Sherman. I am using a mod that allows extra zoom in up to 30 times and that does help with some of these long range shots or trying to put a shot, thread a, thread a needle shot through there. But I am positioned waiting for the enemy to come around the corner telling our Artie to shift himself because he is kinda in the line of fire. Right now, it's just somewhat of a waiting game. Our South Force is not doing super great. One of the things with this map is that uh, the engagement zones are very thin and narrow. Um, with the exception of a few areas, you've got very restricted lines of sight that really prevent you from, uh, you know, from being safe. You have to kind of get in there and brawl. So I get a nice lucky shot on that IS there. <laughs> but the refire rate of this gun is going to help continue to drop down some damage really quick. Especially when you got a lot of enemies here. You have to spread around your shots to prevent tap. But I'm going to try and kill this IS first. Oh, thrashed my uh, platoon mate gets in there first. But I'm still in a great point position. Able to wail on the side of this tiger too. See that the oh yeah you know, zooming in you can kind of see through bushes a little bit. 
So suddenly there's a rock there. I'm gonna try and use the cap. Ah, that shot went a little wide. Didn't let it zoom in all the way. But it did reset, so... I'll take that. Knock that guy out. Now I'm gonna try and help out uh, my other platoon buddy. Alright, so right here, we've gone ahead and wiped out their attack force, but unfortunately our attack force in the south has also gotten wiped out. So basically it's just us three in the platoon and a handful of puppies and one new guy um, holding this last position. Now we know there's quite a bit of stuff coming at us, so we're going to have to kind of deploy to receive them because uh, they're most likely just going to try and attack straight into us. Trying to find a shot on that IS-3, but it's a real small window. Let's try and zoom in. No, it must have hit something in between. But he is stuck there. It's ex Commodore who's bashing away at him. Alright, so he's gonna back up and get out of the way. So at this point, we're playing very conservatively. Um, we are down the last few enemy tanks, but oops. Our FCM 50T just got caught by surprise and destroyed. So now we know their KV 2s over there. So I'm going to go ahead and move to try and take him out. We're just kind of trying to find the enemy and catch them while they're split up from each other. So our T 28 prototype gets lit. But I'm gonna try and take out this kid too. Right? Now we've kind of got this T28 prototype in a nice little crossfire. All of us have shots on him. And we're able to basically wreck him pretty good. Now the refire right here really helps me out. Because I'm able to drop an extra shot before he pulls back in the cover. So we take him out. Now we're going to try and work on this KV-3. Our ability to kind of communicate with each other and talk and, and work together is helping us out here. Fortunately, X-Commodore gets uh, high-rolled by that KV-3 and gets killed, but... We're able to kind of avenge his death here. Now I'm just blind shooting into this KV-3, because I'm hoping that he's tracked there, and then I'm just... Pound and shot there we go. Killed him, blind shot. Yay. So now we've pretty much got it in the bag. Um, there's only two enemy tanks left. Well, one already and one tank. So it's a pretty good carry by our platoon here. Nine kills total. And a uh, good amount of the damage done. So like I said before, the thing about this AC-48 is its speed. You know, a lot of the TDs don't uh, don't have the same level of speed as these French TDs, and that's their that's their great advantage. I feel that using the 100 instead of the 120 allows you to kind of leverage that speed. Oh, oh this is uh, not having a turret is a bad situation, but this guy is also kind of bad. So I'm able to. That was a lucky penetration in his front there, but. He's not trying to get around my side. Or he probably is, but French TD, good mobility. I'm able to outmaneuver him. And, just him up. and uh, he wasn't able to penetrate anything in front of me because French TDs actually have pretty good armor in the front, starting with, uh, well, with this tank, the AC 48 in tier 8. Kind of embarrassing for him. He really should have been able to uh, outmaneuver me in most circumstances, but like I said, French French tank destroyers with that mobility is really tough. 
that's probably one of the things a lot of us would like to see nerfed in the uh, French or in all the TD lines is to make them more vulnerable to medium tanks and less view range so that they're more reliant on other vehicles to spot more of them which would kind of reduce the uh, how OP TDs are right now in the current metagame so we've done about 4,000 damage which is a really nice amount um, not including those blind shots we took at the KB3 and I'm bad at driving so I hit the edge of that rock So we're just hunting down this last guy, and uh, he's making it real difficult for us. It turns out he was actually hiding at about uh, Hotel 7, and we thought he was probably hiding at the back of the map. So we have to resort to just capping it out and not getting that last kill. Um, I maybe could have gone and hunted him down for a Top Gun medal, but you know, I'm not really a metal hunter, so I was okay with the 4K damage and the uh, five kills. Again, you can see this TD is just so, so mobile. And like I said, that's the main reason I use the 100 instead of the 120. Is the 100, you can... It's much better at moving around, you know, s snapshotting a target or stopping quickly and aiming in at a target quickly, whereas the 120, you're going to spend significant amounts of time aiming in, and you're going to give the enemy the opportunity to shoot back at you which is not super good in these TDs because they don't have a lot of hit points. You don't have a lot of margin of error. Um, you can get some troll bouncing with the AC-48's front armor, but it's not reliable. You know, no, no armor is reliable in this game um, with the way gold shells are and just, you know, lucky rolls from people. So, well, hope you enjoyed that replay, and uh, there we go. We capped it out. It's a win. Yay.